All right, so we are now driving from the entry point into the Gaza Strip from Israel. We crossed the actual physical border. We then boarded uh, a vehicle. We are now going uh, beyond here for some extra checks before we are actually free to move around Gaza. Uh, this is indicative of some of the difficulty, uh, not just in the movement of people, because Gaza is completely enclosed uh, by Israel and by Egypt, but the movement of goods. So if people here are trying to make their life more prosperous or try to come up with entrepreneurial ideas and do business, there are lots and lots and lots of specific restrictions on how they can do that. And we're gonna be taking a look at some of those. Hello. Nice to see you. While in the Gaza Strip in 2019, I met with Majid Mashrawi. Majid was 24 years old then. She was already on to her second startup company. This one was an effort to improve daily life in Gaza, where electricity was in short supply even in peacetime. Her newest company at the time was called Sunbox. It provided compact solar chargers that Gazans could use to power small household appliances during the daily blackouts. What does success in your business feel like? Uh, success is how many people would have access to electricity. This is how we measure our impact. So we don't care how much, like, we, of course, we employ people, we hire people. The average age of our company is like 24. Yeah. Uh, but for success for our company is allowing more people to get electricity. What's the electricity problem here for people who don't know? Um, people since, well, Gaza since 2006 has been suffering from um, electrical crisis. Um, we enjoy only like three to six hours of electricity a day. So I'm, I'm sarcastic by saying enjoying, but um, for someone like me, I grew up in this blockade and it's almost more than half of my, my age. And I used to study all of my college life on a candle and my parents were freaking out every day because like you, you, you might be sleeping, uh, this could burn the whole room and that's, that's a fact because many families lost their, their kids and, and their houses because of candles. So this always, that, that always, like, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a passion for me that I wanted to do something to solve this issue and that's why we started Sunbox. So kids in Gaza grow up uh, with this idea that there's electricity for a short amount of time. So what happens? It's, it's a crazy amount of time where everybody plugs everything in and charges everything yes. in that time that you have yes. electricity? Yes. So you, I wake up in the morning, I have to plan for having a shower a day in, in advance. Other than that, I will not find hot water. So I have a friend who arrived in Gaza. Uh, she's Gazan, but she, she was born in the States. She came here to visit her family, and she the first message she sent to me was like, there's no hot water to have a shower. So this is a fact, and I used to wake up in the morning, I was like, did I charge my phone from last night? My laptop's are charged. If not, they have to go to a coffee shop, we're gonna charge it and work. And it's it, be, it becomes part of our life. Right. And people started to adapt their life around it. But this is not a right thing to do. Like people should keep fighting for having 24 hours. So some people feel happy when they have eight to 10 hours of electricity a day, but it's, that's, that's should, that shouldn't make them happy. What, the, what, what should make them happy is having 24 hours because this is a right. Talk to me about the travel. It's yeah. hard to travel it's in this crazy place. To travel. <laughs> yeah. What does travel involve for you? How, uh, how is your travel different than my travel? Well, your travel, it takes you like uh, two, two minutes to pick a flight to come to the region. And then um, some people coordinate for you so you get inside Gaza or the West Bank or Israel. For me to travel, I need to apply for four different permits and it's with four different organizations or associations or authorities and it doesn't it's not smooth so you cannot go and apply you need someone to apply for you and you need someone to sponsor you and then sometimes you get the non-objection from jordan and then you don't you don't get the exit from israel sometimes you get you don't get the non-objection you get the exit and every permit has expiry date so it's to get everything on the same plate, it's, it's, it's a miracle. Every time I leave Gaza, different people support me to leave. But the crazy thing is sometimes they tell me it's impossible to happen and they just, it just happens. I have no idea how. So if you were to, I, I don't know if the, the government here has ever come to you and said, how can we make it easier yeah. for people like you to yeah. start a business and run a business? If they did that, yeah. what would you tell them? Uh, it's funny thing because when I was in Germany, I saw the Minister of Business and Energy sitting with two successful business women and telling them, what do you want? How can we support you as a government? And I started to cry because the way that our government is treating us, it's like, it's, it's very different. Because I've never got any support from the government. And when we try to do something, the government said, hey guys, you're not allowed to do it. And, and I, I don't want to say more details because it's on the camera, but the thing is, 
I wish. يعني, I don't think it's uh, soon. I don't believe in, in, in the politics, the current politics, but I do believe that we can create our own politics.